Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Global Evangelistic Center here in Kissimmee, Florida. Please be seated. We are in a prophetic season of end time relevancy where things are happening all around us right now at an unprecedented rate. And political tsunamis <laughs> are washing away governmental corruption as the light of truth is shed on the deviant and duplicitous actions of morally perverted leaders. Babylon speaks with a prophetic voice of clarity despite its state of rebellion <laughs> that tried to build towers of occult worship to establish man's divinity without God. Hmm. Babylon speaks a righteous remnant today like the fast growing underground church of modern day Persia, Iran, where a revival birthed by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the fire of the is causing a rapidly advancing growth of the body of Christ, a righteous remnant that is rapidly expanding. My God, that's awesome to think about. As the underground church of Persia, Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. This is talking about the time of the end, a time that we are now in. Now at the end time, Michael, the great angelic prince who stands guard over the children of your people will arise and there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. But at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book of life will be rescued. <laughs> My God, what a promise. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake. God, if you've ever lost a loved one, what a comforting word. Resurrect these to everlasting life, but some to disgrace and everlasting contempt, abhorrence. Those who are spiritually wise shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. Yeah. Oh, there's a city of light where there cometh no night. It's a city of beauty untold. Shadows all will have flown. I will meet friends I've known when I get to that city of gold we all have to go to the dust there was a righteous remnant taken into babylon by king nebuchadnezzar from the siege of jerusalem in the third year of the reign of jehoiakim king of judah who had done evil in the lord's sight According to 2 Kings 
chapter 23, verse 37. Uh, and therefore, he had his kingdom snatched from him. Righteousness exalts a nation. In my last message, we started to look at the prophet Daniel, who was one of the righteous remnant, along with uh, some of the articles of the house of God besieged and brought into the land of Shinar, which is the term used in the Hebrew Bible for the general region of Mesopotamia. The region of Mesopotamia today would roughly correspond to most of Iraq plus Kuwait, the eastern parts of Syria, uh, southeastern Turkey, and regions along the Turkish, Syrian, and Iran-Iraq borders. The prophet Daniel, whose prophetic message was sealed for the end times is now being profoundly revealed by the reality of today's headlines. Saints, you can't live with your head in the sand. This thing is happening all around us. As anti-Semitism increases today at an alarming proportion, it is vitally important to remember that Israel has a special angelic prince, a high-ranking angel that stands God over Zion. Michael, the great angelic prince who stands God over the children of God's covenant people as testified by King David. You can check it out for yourselves in First Chronicles 21 and verse 16. The, the, the socio-political upheaval and banishment of the Hebrew people because of their rebellion as was prophesied by Ezekiel took place. And now we are in the season of Aliyah where God's children are coming home. Hmm. Aliyah season is what we're in right now. Uh, there is a coming, a great tribulation, a seven-year period of God's judgment of a rebellious Israel and of us, the Gentile world, in this end-time season. Everyone who is found written in the book of life will be rescued. Yes. Saints of God, that's the rapture. Yes. Yes. In your Bibles, Matthew chapter 24, verses 39 to 41. In, in this section 37 to 42, uh, so will the coming of the Son of Man be unexpected judgment. Verse 40, at that time two men will be in the field. One will be taken for judgment and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken for judgment and one will be left. If there was any time for us to get on fire for our loved ones, it's now. We don't want our loved ones left behind. At the end time, there will be the day of judgment for eternal reward or punishment. The spiritually wise will shine. There's going to be a reward on the other side. I'm working for the other side. And there's going to be a temporal reward. But the eternal reward is more significant. Those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever 
and ever. That's eternity. We will have our eternal reward. Hmm. There is an age old hostile spiritual battle waging saints of God. Hmm. Daniel identifies key principles the hostile prince of Persia and the prince of Greece if you study your Bible you'll know that the prince of Greece is talking about the Antichrist and right now we're dealing with the prince of Persia <laughs> these hostile spirit forces represented a mention of spiritual warfare that I don't personally believe the church is ready for. We still dealing with baby demons. <laughs> when the battle is heating up, it's now upon us. And for which we must be ready. My God. There is a shifting going on in the prophetic realm. Hear me well. As so accurately prophesied by Daniel. Both by his spoken prophetic word and by the intentional hand of Jehovah. By the intentional hand of God who uses our life. And our situations. And even our positioning. Where we may find ourselves geographically moved. Beyond our control. Just like Daniel. To, 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 to speak a message. God wants us positioned. So he can speak a message to us. And through us. And so that we can be a blessing. I don't care what you're going through. God's going to bring you through. And you're going to be a blessing to other people around you. And for generations to come. History. History records that the Persian king Cyrus took Babylon. The ancient capital. Uh, of oriental of an oriental empire covering modern day uh, Iraq Syria Lebanon and Israel the prophet Daniel served until at least the third year of King Cyrus in a strategic position of prominence and it was under Cyrus the great that the Hebrew people were first allowed to return to Israel after 70 years of captivity oh that should be a word of encouragement for someone sometimes God will move you <laughs> sometimes God will reposition you and you might wonder why God did you move me why did you reposition me it was better where I came from. <clears throat> King Cyrus actively assisted the Jews in rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem under the Jewish scribe and high priest Ezra and King Zerubbabel, <laughs> the royal governor of the rebuilt Jerusalem. You see, if God had not moved you, if God had not repositioned you, he could not get his will done. <clears throat> King Cyrus restored the temple treasures to Jerusalem and allowed building expenses to be paid from the royal treasury as recorded in Ezra, the first chapter, verse 4. In any place where a survivor, Jewish exile, may live, let the men, Gentiles he's talking to, of that place support him with silver and gold, with goods and cattle, 
together with free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. You see, when God moves you, your pockets may be empty, your cupboards may be bare, but when God moves you and when you are in the will and in the purpose of God, God will get it to you if God can get it through you. King Cyrus's goodwill and generosity towards the Hebrew people played a vital part in restarting the temple worship practices that had almost died out during the 70 years of their captivity. God will use the heathen. God will use the unsaved. God will use people that we may look away from to bless us. When we are in position, he'll call a raven from the sky. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has not forgotten you. It was from here that Judaism as we know it today had its genesis. God will use the unclean. God will use the unsaved. That's why you don't get in the habit of saying and sticking your nose up at people and saying, hmm, hmm, I wouldn't deal with them. You ain't God. Sit yourself down. You ain't God. You don't know what God is doing. Christians can be some of the most judgmental people under God's son. When we yield our will over to God, sometimes he will do something that we do not understand at that time. But, but, but in just a little while, weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Like Daniel, who God shifted around geographically for a purpose which he may not have fully understood. Oh, come on, saints. Sometimes you don't understand what God is doing. You feel like a leaf in the wind. You just blow it and you're wondering, God, what are you doing? God, have you forgotten me? I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. You, you, you got to move away from your reasoning. When you walk in a faith walk, sometimes you got to move away from your intellect. God sits high, but he looks low. He knows what you're going through. He feels your pain. He sees your tears. He understands your sorrow. Dez, get ready to read for me. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. You see this faith walk? This ain't no easy walk. Sometimes you, you, you wish you, you, you didn't <laughs> have to walk it. But as Proverbs 3 and 5 tells us to trust in Adonai with all of our hearts. And to lean not on our own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3 days. Verse 7 to nine. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. 
Honor the Lord with thy substance mm. and with the first fruits of thine increase. You, you see, your health and your healing, your wealth and your blessing <laughs> and your fulfillment of God's purpose on your life, as was the case with Daniel, they are all tied up in your ability and willingness to get beyond your natural mind and reason and get your mind out of the way. Yeah. To get beyond your complaining. God shifted Daniel around geographically for a purpose. That was far greater than Daniel himself. God wants to do something with you. And the purpose that God wants to use you for is far greater than yourself. But God can use you if you're in the way. Mm -hmm. Babylon, the ancient capital, the empire covering more than Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel, the land of Shinar the general region of Mesopotamia, which today would be most of Iraq plus Kuwait, the eastern parts of Syria, southeastern Turkey and regions around, along the Turkish, Syrian and Iran, Iraq borders. This has now become the pivotal point for end time prophecy. <laughs> With the crossroads of Armageddon now being the nation of Syria, where these key end time figures are now strategically positioned. Saints of God, you, you got to watch your news. Gog will be the leader of a great army that attacks the land of Israel. Gog is described as of the land of Magog. <sighs> Magog, the land and person... <sighs> China, Russia, and China. And then you've got the, 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 the allies of Magog who are actually the offspring of Magog, the Scythians, the Grand Ayatollah. <laughs> ah, saints of God, things are happening. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right in front of our eyes you see because of the syrian threat what basically is uh, an islamic civil war going on right now not just against isis but a, a hot war between saudi arabia you watch your news and their conservative sunni islamic kingdom primarily backed by the United States, the United Kingdom and France. And the, 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 these are crucial times as we see that even all of President Trump's insults to Arabs and his attempts at banning Muslims could not stop all of the pomp and pageantry and lavish palace festivities organized by King Salman's royal court. But hear me well, that warm and fuzzy welcome is not because of his magnetic, his magnetic personality and, and his family values, nepotism, uh, which is a way of life. <laughs> that they understand with inheritance of crowns. Uh, there are nearly 40 heads of state, right as I'm talking, <laughs> from across the Islamic world, joined by Arab business leaders that have overlooked whatever insult may have been levied their way because 
of a new U.S. Saudi program worth potentially more than $200 billion in direct and indirect investments. You see, this red carpet deal has a mutuality of the Arab leaders overlooking insults and rants in exchange for America being quiet on Saudi political reform and on their respect for human rights. <laughs> because the bigger picture here is to strengthen this alliance to be able to stand up to Persia. <laughs> Iran. <laughs> Iran is a 12 Shia Islamic Republic founded in an anti-Western revolution with close ties to Gog and Magog, Russia and China. <laughs> and both Saudi Arabia and Iran are in a battle for control of Islam. And both countries are major oil and gas exporters and have clashed over energy policy to control the global oil market and oil prices. And touch your neighbor and say it's all about, it's all about the money. <laughs> While Gog and Magog, Russia and China are playing both sides of this, this ge geopolitical fence in supporting both sides of this, of this subtle Islamic scrimmage <laughs> because their goal is not religion but economics and becoming a regional power while further empowering themselves with petroleum <laughs> and their glue is their real anti-American sentiments and desire to replace America as the regional and global power that they are. You got to be careful by not getting in the mix and outsmarting yourself. Because I'm a simple island boy and, and there's an island singer say you got to fulfill the book. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The crossroads of Armageddon are a strategic and central point in Bible prophecy because of Syria's proximity to Israel, the alliance of Iran, and its connection to Hezbollah, which is a Shia Islamist militant group and political party based in Lebanon. Next step. And stop on the journey. Uh, the backing of Gog and Magog and Saudi Arabia's numerous calls for Syria's President Bashar al-Assad to be removed. While Isaiah chapter 17 verse 1, stick with your Bible, prophesies that Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. Damascus, which is the capital of Syria, which is the oldest community occupied in the world, has never been without citizens and has never been totally destroyed. So this is a prophecy yet to be fulfilled. This is not the only hot spot in the world as North Korea will continue to be a global hot spot for our very serious intercession, saints of God. As just a few hours ago, they violated the UN Security Council's demand that Pyongyang Conduct no further such test. Papa, get ready to read for me. Mark chapter 13, verses 7 to 8. Saints, they fired another missile with their last missile test fired just last week. 
being one which said by them that it was the type of a rocket capable of carrying nuclear warheads, the hotbed of North Korea and Syria, even though they have the same key partners aligned behind them, may prophetically be the end time season of birth pains, birth pains. Mark chapter 13 verses 7 to 8. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The beginning of birth pains. The intolerable anguish and suffering. Prophetically, we are in the beginning of birth pains. Birth a stage on the dispensational time clock for the battle of Armageddon, which occurs near the end of the tribulation during the bold judgments as the nations of the earth gather to fight against Israel and subsequently gather to fight against the Lord himself. <laughs> My God. When we look at the dangerous global chessboard with all of its pieces moving into their prophesied position. The excitement that should fill us in knowing is that God will not leave us nor forsake us. <laughs> that there is also a great end time revival that is prophesied to happen. It's called the day of the Lord. Joel. Get ready to read for me mama. Joel chapter 2 verses 30 to 32. As the prophet Joel reveals to us about the great outpouring of the end times. Where God has promised to pour out his spirit on all mankind. Where our sons and daughters will prophesy. And the old men will dream dreams. And the young men will see visions. The great revival is coming. Joel chapter 2 verses 30 to 32. And I will show wonders in the heavens and mm. in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be torn into darkness and the moon into blood mm. before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. My God. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, saints, you got to say, Jesus, deliver me. For in Mount Zion yes, and in sir. Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord said. Among the remnant mm. whom the Lord calls. Mm, mm, mm. God is calling his watchman to the wall of intercession. To ensure that this end time revival is fully birthed. For his greatest end time revival. And as we walk in our purpose and call, and as we mature in him, there will be an intensification like we have never seen before of the spiritual battle that will be assigned to us. Because when you start living for God, you're a target. If you've been going through hell, it's because God has a call on your life. Devil don't trouble people that ain't no threat to his kingdom. There is coming a spiritual battle for those of us that have an assignment. But no matter what we face, we know that the redeeming love and power.
power of God through Yeshua, through Christ, God's creative word is supreme to all forces. As we get ready for that great end time global harvest, our eyes must be opened like Daniel's who saw those hostile spirit forces which represent a dimension of spiritual warfare that is now upon us and for which we have to make ready, saints. There is an angelic hierarchy that was originally made by Yeshua, the Word of God. Colossians chapter 1. Don Ed, hit Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17 for me. You see, I don't know about you, but in these last days, sometimes it feels like, God, where are you? Sometimes you can go through troubles. Sometimes you can go through trials. Sometimes you can go through challenges where you question your faith itself. But you've got to remember that God, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he has not forgotten you. And that God is greater than anything that we can face. Yes. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. Colossians chapter 1, 15 through 17. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. And then and now a couple quick PowerPoints on these spiritual forces mentioned here. Jesus, who scripture tells us, is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God, created all the angelic beings, and his power is greater than all of them. Amen? Amen. So, so, so no matter what you go through, no matter what your challenge is, no, no, no matter if, if, if you've got sickness in your body that the doctors negatively diagnose, no matter if your cupboards are empty, no matter if you have lack, he is Jehovah Jireh, an excellent provider, no matter if the devil gets busy in your home, he is Jehovah Nisi, our God, our better. He gives us peace in the midst of the storm. Oh, 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 I got to stay on, stay on course. <laughs> He himself existed and is before all things. And in him all things hold together. He is the controlling, cohesive force of the universe. <laughs> but as Revelation 12 and 4 says, a third of the stars, fallen angels, were cast out with Satan. And these fallen forces were of different ranks and uh, serve different purposes. Uh, and some theological studies, they call it angelology, have, have, have been even classified them into different spheres. Uh, what I'm going to focus on uh, in messages coming up uh, are the ones listed in First Colossians. Thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. Uh, this group is the angelic hierarchy that was cast out of heaven in the great rebellion with Satan. They cannot be fought, hear me, saints of God, because a lot of Christians make this mistake. They cannot be fought like regular demons. You see, we get so used to, to rebuking. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We even when rebuke Cole. I rebuke cold. No, go lie down. Get some vitamin C. No, 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 see, these, these ain't your little play play demons. I'm talking about some real serious forces, angelic fallen beings. You can't rebuke these things. And you can't cast them out. I cast you out. In the, no, 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 that don't work here. No, it don't work here, okay? Uh, but, but these invisible forces are aligned and assigned to wrestle against us. But we have to be properly spiritually dressed 
in the whole armor of God with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Saints, there is a way. I'm telling you, there is a way to be victorious. There is a way to be victorious in this battle. Because his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier. See what I want to focus on as I close this morning. <laughs> a righteous remnant taken into Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up and Jehoiakim, because he became, because he wasn't living right, he became his servant for three years. I believe that there are some people mm, under the sound of my voice that have been held captive to Babylon for a season. And three, one, two, three. Is your number of deliverance. Three is your number of deliverance. You see, because the number three is associated with God's mighty acts. God ain't going to do this thing naturally. God is going to do this thing supernaturally. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, just like at Mount Sinai, when the Lord was to come down to give his law on the third day. Oh, 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 as in Hosea's prophetic promise that the Lord would raise up his people on the third day. I believe that we need that kind of a miracle. Babylon, Babylon. Just as the Tower of Babel is significant for the confusion of our language, God's message today is that unless your language unless your mindset is changed deliverance cannot come we got to get the word of god in our mouth we we see all the negativity on tv but we god is calling for intercessors god is calling for watchmen that will speak to things that be not as though they were god is calling for a fire breathing set of saints that will not be afraid to stand up, stand up for Jesus. There is a shifting going on. Oh, like Jehoiakim, you can't be free. You've struggled with this thing for so long and you think you can't be free. Your deliverance cannot come until you fully surrender to God. There is a shifting going on in the prophetic realm, saints of God. Daniel was so accurate. Both by his spoken prophetic word and by the intentional hand of God. God will use our life. God will use our situation. God will even move our positioning. Huh. Where we may find ourselves geographically moved beyond our control. When God has servants, the servant don't give God advice on what. <laughs> Come on, saints. How could you be telling God, no, I'm not going to go on this assignment. No, I'm not going to do this because this is my reasoning now. It's my logic is telling me, no, get beyond yourself. And if I had a prophetic global word, it's that. Hear me well. Don't judge Persia. <laughs> Don't judge me <laughs> by the present state because even though it um, may appear that principalities and powers are aligned against Persia are aligned against me God has a destiny 
to fulfill. And God ain't finished with me yet. Don't, don't, don't judge Persia. There's a movement going on. You see, I'd love to just jump into showing you the principalities that you're fighting, but you've got to understand thrones. You got to understand dominions. You got to understand principalities and you got to understand powers. I don't know who I was talking to this morning, but I believe that <laughs> God wants to bring a new season.